let's talk about theater in education and the role it plays when it comes to experiential learning also known as learning by doing the class 10th english curriculum has an excerpt from the play the proposal written by the russian playwright anton chekhov so let's find out why a play needs to be enacted and why students should be encouraged to actively participate in theater a play without an enactment is like a star studded sky without the moon enactment helps student hone competency based skills while they experience the magic of theater they step into the shoes of different characters to understand the power of imagination absolutely the enactment of a play helps students relate to a different time and era in this case the 19th century russian society and draw parallels with the contemporary society anton chekhov discusses various themes such as uh, appearance versus reality wealth and property and the institution of marriage he uses humor to bring out the nuances of the day to day interactions between people exposing their true nature humor is an integral part of the play the verbal tussle between the characters is praiseworthy it is ironical to see how the characters are governed by circumstances and situations definitely irony combined with satire and use of wit makes the play an amusing one it is interesting to watch how the playwright follows the unconventional path rather than painting an idyllic and perfect picture of the institution of marriage he chooses to portray what actually transpires in real life that's so true while thinking about the relevance of this play in the syllabus and how it is significant it struck me that this 19th century play could help our students imbibe 21st century skills the four c's namely critical thinking creativity collaboration and communication yes theater therefore becomes a powerful tool in achieving these objectives the national education policy of 2020 encourages the use of theater as a tool for art integrated learning and also further the cause of competency based education isn't it wonderful to see the scope that theater in education presents to all educators absolutely ma'am theater truly is a fantastic medium that allows educators numerous possibilities for innovation and creativity imagine a virtual play in this hybrid mode of teaching where our physical territory is limited to a screen yet it offers us infinite possibilities with a virtual reality let's see how the students use this virtual medium to showcase a real life experience we present to you an adaptation of anton chekhov's the proposal delhi public school rk puram the students of expressions theater club present an adaptation of anton chekhov's the proposal Chubukov he sits upon an armchair his nose in a book yet there are wrinkles of worry upon his forehead come let's have a look let us begin with greeting our first character mr chubukov ha <laughs> ha he seems to be engulfed by an aura of ease and ambience as he flips through his book but as the wise men say never judge a book by its cover the cover looks serene but the story within is absolutely tumultuous yet what is the cause of this tumult what is the cause of this twist in the story that is what i'm going to tell you let's see now look here look at this petite damsel natalia the only daughter and the apple of mr chubukov's eye she seems to love her farm doesn't she of course she does she loves it very much Now that I have spoken about love let me tell you that love is going to walk into her life very soon but will it be an ordinary kind of love or will it be love that dawns in a tire of jest and humor and now let me introduce you to the play's jester oh i mean the man of the hour lomov despite his palpitations he has mustered up the courage to propose to Natalia 
Will he be able to master the art of winning her heart? She is confident, headstrong and sure. She can snap her fingers and cause an uproar. He is palpitating, jittery and nervous. His proposal is heartfelt but very tumultuous. They will argue, they will fight. Upon principles they will dwell. Oh, will this rendezvous end well? My dear fellow, whom do I see? Oh, 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 oh. Ivan Vasilyevich, I am extremely glad to hear my fellow. This is a surprise. Tell me, how are you? Uh, thank you, and how may you be getting on? Oh, we just get along somehow, thanks to your prayers. <laughs> sit down, sit down, please do. But, my dear fellow, are you headed to a ball? Why dress so formally? <laughs> well, you see, it's like this. I've come to you, Honor Chipan Spanovich, to, to trouble you with the request. It's, it's just, I must ask your pardon. I'm getting very really excited, I don't know. He has come for my money again. <laughs> I think we shan't give him any. Uh, what is it? What is it? Tell me. <laughs> you see Natalia? Oh, sorry, sir. So, 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 you, you're not Natalia. Uh, I beg your pardon. It's, it's just I'm awfully excited. And, and you alone can help me. Don't I won't go down I... and round it. Spit it up. Well? <laughs> One moment, uh. The fact is. I've come to ask your hand in marriage. Oh dear lord, pardon me, but I must break your heart and uh, decline this offer. Oh, I mean, I mean, I've come to ask your daughter's hand in marriage. I do, by even Vasilyevich. Say it again, I didn't hear it at all, say it again. I have the honor oh, to ask you if it's okay. I am so glad. <laughs> you know how much I love you, as if you were my own son. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm acting like a fool today, but that is because I'm absolutely off my mind for joy. <laughs> I won't call Natalia, yes, that sounds right. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, do you think that, that she will agree to this, this proposal? I, of course. He's in love. Like a love sick cat and so on. <laughs> it shan't be long, dear. Oh, I <laughs> forgot my glasses. Where are they? There they are! <laughs> Forgot my daughter! <laughs> Silly me! Ooh, I feel... I feel as if... as if I live for a test today! No, 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 no! If I start overthinking, then I'll never get married! No, I can't... It's, uh... <laughs> Natalia! She is an excellent housekeeper! Not bad looking! And she's well educated too! What more do I want? And then I'm already 35, and that's a proper qualification. Then I don't know what she'll say. I think she'll say yes, or, or maybe no. I don't know. I have some water till then. Hi, Ivan Vasilievich. How do you do, Ivan? Ivan. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Uh, uh, how do you, how do you do, uh, Honoured Natalia? Good, good. It's been so long since we last met. Oh, the weather is splendid now. But, why are you dressed so formally? Though I must say, you look good. Tell me, are you going to a ball? <laughs> you see, Honoured Natalia, of course, after hearing you out, You'll be, you'll be surprised and, and perhaps even angry, but I... Uh, What's the matter? Uh, well... You must know, Natalia, that I'm long since my childhood, in fact, had the privilege of knowing your family. So I was thinking that the Lumovs and the Chubukovs have always had the most friendly and... And, and I might almost say... What's the word? Uh, the most affectionate regard for each other. <laughs> yes, yes. And as you know, my land is a near neighbor of yours. You will remember that my apple orchard is at your grasslands and it's between the rose gardens. Oh, I am interrupting you. But you say my apple orchards. But are they yours? Uh, 
Yes, mine, honest Natalia. I'm speaking of those apple orchards which are wedged in between your grasslands and the rose garden. Yes, yes, they are ours. No, I think you're mistaken. Really? You won't get me to believe that. <laughs> but you can see from the documents, honest Natalia. Apple orchards, it's true. Who oh, wants the subject of dispute? But now everybody knows that they are mine. With an estate. So you see, my aunt's grandmother gave the orchards for the free and temporary use to the peasants of your father's grandfather in return for a deal to make bricks for her. Now the peasants belong to your father's grandfather had the free use of these orchards for, for, for I think 40 years, yes, and had got into the habit regarding them as their own. When it happened that it was again my aunt's grandfather. <laughs> It isn't at all like that. Both grandfather and great grandfather reckoned that their land extended to Rose Garden, which means that apple orchards were ours. I don't see what there's to argue about. It's simply silly. But you can see the documents, Honor Natalia. Honor Diamond Silly Witch, you are joking. We have had the land for nearly 300 years. And then we are suddenly told that this isn't us. Listen, these orchards aren't even worth much to me. Perhaps a hundred rubles? But I can't stand on fence. Hear me out. I, I implore you. The peasants of your father's grandfather, as I've already had the honor of explaining to you, I used to make really this of all <laughs> this about aunts and grandfathers and grandmothers. Orchards are ours! That's all! No, mine! It's ours! You can go on proving it for days on it. You can go and bring 300 bouquets worth 300 rubles. But I tell you, they are ours, ours, and ours! Look, Natalia, I don't want the orchards, but I am acting on principle. If you like, I'll, I'll, I'll present them as a gift to you. Oh, really? I can make you a present of them myself because they are mine. We always thought of you as a good neighbor, a friend. But what you are doing isn't at all neighborly in my opinion. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, so then, then you think that I'm a land grabber? Adam? Never in my life have I grabbed anybody else's land and I shan't allow anyone to accuse me of having done so. The orchards are mine. You understand? No, true. Mine. I'll prove it. I'll send my words to the orchards this very day. What did you just say? I will give, give it to them in the next You dare. The apple orchards are mine. You understand? Mine. Ours. Mine. It's ours. Oh, I have forgotten my book here, but clearly you all have forgotten your manners. What are you shouting for? Papa, please tell this gentleman who owns the apple orchards. We or he? Darling, the orchards are ours, of course. No question about it. But please, sir, how can they be yours? You be a reasonable man. My aunt's grandmother gave the orchards for the free. I used to the of excuse me, excuse me, my precious. You forget just this. But the peasants didn't pay your grandmother and all that because the orchards were in dispute. And now everybody knows that they're ours. It only means that you haven't seen the plan. I will prove it to you that they are mine. Why? Yell like that. You won't prove anything just by yelling. Alright then. I'll have the matter taken to the court and I will show you. To court. You are more than welcome to go to court because this just runs in your family. What rubbish! Oh, 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 my heart! Oh, oh, my heart! Oh, oh. Your heart! Do you even have one? You are a heartless person! You're mean! My heart!
and that winning, that scared Rohan to confirm that she could make a proposal here. <laughs> what proposal? Why, he'll come here to propose to you. To propose to me? To propose to me? He'll come here to propose to me, and Papa, you didn't tell me before. Bring him back. Papa, just bring him back. Bring him? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Hit the scarecrow. I mean, my scarecrow. My Ivan. Oh, Papa, fetch him, please. I, but, okay. Just don't get about it. <laughs> He's here now. He's here now. But this time, you talk to him yourself. <laughs> what a daughter I have. My dearest Ivan, forgive us. We were all a little heated. I remember now. Apple orchards, and they really are yours. We were wrong. I did it on principle. My land. Me. Yes, yes, I'm the principal. Just so. Now, let's talk of something else. You look tense. Is everything alright, Ivan? No. Have you heard? What a misfortune I've had. My dog Charlie. That's my name. Oh. What a pity! That must be horrible for you, Ivan. But what happened? I don't know. Must have got his leg twisted or, or, or bitten by some other dog. My very best dog will say nothing of that. But I can run out 125 rubles for him. 125 rubles? You see, Papa gave 85 rubles for our dog Coco. And Coco is his best friend Charlie. I need... Oh, wait. wait, wait, wait. Sorry, uh... Coco? Better than Charlie? <laughs> what an idea! Oh, is better. Coco is young, but on points and pedigree, he is better than any other dog. Excuse me, Natalia, but I think you forget that he's overweight. Overweight? Overweight? Is he? Our dog is a thoroughbred animal. Why is there no getting at the pedigree of your dog? He's old and ugly as a worn-out cab horse. He is old, but Charlie is a dog. And as for Coco, well, it's too funny to argue. Dogs like Coco, you may find them under every bush. There is some demon of contradiction in you today. First you pretend that the orchards are yours. And now, this Charlie is better than my dear Coco. I don't like people who don't say what they mean. Because you know perfectly well. My Coco is a hundred times better than your silly Charles. I see, Natalia, that you can see me either blind or a fool. Oh, 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 my heart. It's not me. Oh. Excuse, excuse me, but I cannot continue, continue with this. Just... I won't keep quiet until you acknowledge that my Coco is a hundred times better than your silly Johnny. Oh, for the love of God, let me read my book in peace. What are you shouting for again? Papa, tell us truly which is the better dog, our Coco or his Johnny? Sir, I implore you to tell me just one thing. Is your dog overweight or not? Yes or no? And suppose he is? How does it matter? He's the best dog in this town, yes. But isn't my Charlie better? <laughs> really now it's... Don't excite yourself, my precious one. You forget that your Charlie is... utterly ugly. Well, I mean, in your comparison, he still looks good. <laughs> I'm going to die here. My heart. 
my back. <laughs> my heart is on. <laughs> you want to imagine with him? Are you with the bitch? Are you with the bitch? He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who's dead? Oh, he's dead. He's dead. No, no, no. He can't be dead. No, he's not dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I see stars. Miss, where am I? Oh, hi, Robin gets married. Went to the devil with you. She's willing, and I, I give you my blessings as well. Only leave me in peace. Get married to whom? Excuse me, but what's it all about? What's going on here? Oh, <laughs> oh now I understand. <laughs> My heart stars. I'm happy. Natalia, I just have. But who's going to sleep now? My scarecrow. But still, you will agree now that Coco is better than Charlie, right? Yes, yes, Coco is better than Charlie. Yes, yes, yes. But Charlie is the best. Well, well, that's way to start your family list, isn't it? <laughs> what a weight off my shoulders! What are we waiting for? Let's celebrate. I'm sure you enjoyed watching the play. That's the beauty of technology. Even though the students were recording from their own homes, it gave the impression that they were enacting it out together. A play enactment in class or through the online platform has a lot of scope for numerous activities that can be undertaken by educators. Yes, so true. Character traits can be identified and discussed, giving a broad overview of human nature along with central idea, themes, instances. The play then is not just a mere enactment, rather it gives us the liberty to conduct so many fun sessions that go beyond the text. It gives them the ability to read between the lines and understand the subtext. Yes, and when they are dramatizing the play, they learn about essential values like empathy, compassion, loyalty, respect. Moreover, with this mode, they learn about digital literacy, which is a prerequisite to learning in today's times. Exactly! The facilitators are provided with a plethora of activities to make education more learner-centric. It caters to the need of different learners like auditory, visual and kinesthetic. Absolutely! Even the children with special needs can greatly benefit through theatre in education as they surely remember what they experience. Theatre gives them a medium to express themselves. It also equips them with LSRW, Listening, Speaking, Reading and Writing Skills for Language Competency. I agree. Theatre helps teachers involve students in activities and brings out the best in them. That's how experiential learning fosters growth by offering transformative experiences to add meaning to life. In fact, I believe theatre and education is a fantastic tool for holistic development and growth. And as Benjamin Franklin rightly said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. And that's the beauty of theatre in education. Absolutely ma'am. So we leave you with this teaching practice that will sustain even in the virtual mode. As they say, we all must do theatre to find out who we are and to discover who we could become. And we truly believe in it.